G'day, so a couple of people have said that there's some bits of the video where they can't quite understand what I'm doing. So what I was going to do was go through it in a little bit more detail. Um, we'll start off with uh, the symptoms. I'll show you some of the things that you need uh, and then we'll just run through the process and hopefully that clarifies it. So basically, got a camp drone, got the props off. Always make sure you do anything on your drone with the props off. Um, if I plug the battery in, and turn it on, you'll see some of the symptoms. Uh, some of these uh, always occur. Some of them occur most of the time. Uh, the first thing you'll notice is that the gimbal never initializes and swings into place. Now this is because the fault is with the actual video processor. The video processor also controls those functions. So that's why that doesn't happen. Um, because the video processor hasn't started, the main processor um, has some errors and issues and therefore the light stays white. It never moves past that initial I'm initializing stage into I'm initializing and I'm flashing red. I still have some components that I'm connecting with or just sorting out. Um, yeah, that'll stay white. The lights on the drone generally as a rule um, will always just be lit. Um, and the other symptom is that you can't power the drone off by pressing the power button. You've got to remove the battery. What we do sometimes is if you leave the drone on for a couple of minutes, um, that the main processor will actually error out and then the power LED will start flashing red as well as uh, the lights on the actual drone. Now, that happens occasionally, but you know, one of the things that really sticks out is that the gimbal just never initializes and swings into place. And most of the time, this is the symptom you'll see. I've just got the white LED, as you can see, um, the gimbal hasn't initialized. And the only way to power it off, I can't power it off through the button, the only way to power it off is to remove the battery. So let's do that. Let's power that off, battery's removed. Now, some of the things that you need to carry out the process, you'll need a computer that's running some sort of terminal emulation software. Most people just use PuTTY. Um, there are plenty of other options out there. A couple of people do see some issues with PuTTY that when they connect and they try to type, um, they can't actually type anything within PuTTY. As a general rule, just moving to a different terminal emulation, emulation software fixes that issue. So, a computer's the starting point for terminal animation software. Uh, I always have a magnifying glass for some of the soldering aspects. Um, this one's lit, um, which is really good. Uh, you'll need a USB to serial device, um, or TTL, whatever you want to call it. And you need a cable which has a three pin connector on it. Um, you can use a JST uh, mini connector with a 1.2 millimeter pitch. Uh, I'll drop a link to the one that I use below. This isn't actually one of those. This is the one that I just started using initially when I started doing the process. I have bought some of the others, but I've just never swapped over to it. You'll need a soldering iron and some solder. I also recommend some flux, um, which is just helps you with some of the soldering process. Um, you either need if you're lucky, your drone will have an arm board in it, which has got an SD card already mounted onto it. If it doesn't, there's a couple of things you can do. One is you can try and solder one on, which unless you've got a magnifying glass and some good soldering skills can be a bit tricky. The other option is we did a video on how to make basically one of these boards. Uh, it costs, I think, around about 15 to $20. Um, and it's probably a much safer option because what you can do is you can make that board, disconnect the cable from the original one and plug it in and therefore you're not um, potentially gonna cause any issues to this actual board. You'll need a hex screwdriver uh, to undo the screws. This one's a T8, T8 or a T6? T8, so it's a torque actually, not a hex. Uh, the other thing you need is a little bit of wire And this is used to uh, apply power to the board. Whichever one you use, there's a couple of ways you can do it. 
Um, so basically what I do is I hook one wire up to power on the drone, 3.3 uh, volts. As it, quite often we just use the pin one of the JTAG, um, which is up near the uh, GPS module. Um, I'll show you where that is later. Uh, the other one, we often uh, solder to FB36 on the right hand side. And what happens then is that power, the 3.3 volts, will go through to the FB36 and then that powers whatever board you've got. If you're using the onboard arm board, then you need to solder that to FB36. If you've followed our video and created a board, you can actually solder that onto the board you make itself. Uh, one of the pins will be nominated 3.3 volts. You can just tack that onto that. So moving down, we then have a 1K resistor uh, sitting in the middle here, and that just drops the voltage down a little bit. And that then comes down to my probe, which I touch against that test point one um, to trigger the SD card boot. Okay, so that's an explanation of the symptoms, the tools you'll need. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go away and I'm going to um, solder my wires on. Uh, I'm not gonna show you me soldering it because that's pretty boring. Um, but what I will do when I come back, I'll show you where I've soldered my wires, where I'm gonna touch to you know, trigger that SD boot um, and a couple other things as well. All right, so we'll be back in a moment. So one of the first things you'll need to do is you'll need to actually take the cover off the drone uh, to be able to access the board. So you want to remove the battery. Never store your battery in the drone when you're not using it. Uh, because of the way the circuitry is designed, it's a bit like your TV. You know, you look at your TV that's got that little LED on, it's always drawing a bit of power. Uh, this has a circuit which is basically looking to see that button triggered. So it is consuming like a microscopic little bit of power. If you leave the battery in it for a long enough time, the battery will start uh, draining. If, and if, you, if it goes low enough, it'll get to a point where uh, you can't recharge it because the BMS system inside it will go, no, I'm not recharging this battery because it's not at a state where I think uh, it can be charged. Uh, remove your camera and gimbal. So what you have is there are two screws under the battery and then there is a screw under each arm. Now. Some of the arms, so the bottom arms here, the front arms, you can take the screw out with the arm extended. For the back arms, you've actually got to pull the arms in. So what I'm going to do is I will just pop out the screws. Should have brought a little tray up to put them all in. Uh, tray's down in the workshop at the moment. And that'll, uh, that'll stop you losing uh, bits and pieces if you stick them all in one place. Oh, this will do. So I've folded the other two back and I can now get to the screws there. You can generally get to the screws without taking uh, the legs off. Now you just need to angle your driver in there to, to get at them. Right, one to go. Okay, so the cover screws are off. What I need to do now is actually remove the cover. And it's kind of like, if you've ever taken the shell off a crab, it's a bit like that. You just kind of start at the back and it'll just kind of pop up. And then you just need to rotate it a little bit to come around this bottom little lug. Righto, so I'll just jump out, solder those wires on and uh, I'll be back. Just for reference, uh, this unit does not have an SD card on the arm board. This is the arm board down here. And as you can see, you can see the pins where one could be soldered in. Um, but yeah, clearly there isn't. Um, 
one of the tricky things about soldering one in is you often need to take this board out and to take this board out you need to remove the main board because as you can see the screw holes for it are actually underneath the board so you need to take the board out if you want to take that board out to put one on so you need to remove the main board to do that you need to remove the landing gear and you also need to unplug the motors the motor wires which come down the arms as well as the uh, GPS connection which is actually connected on this side of the board and it runs down through the legs into the compass module sorry not GPS the compass module which actually lives in the landing gear all right back in a sec okay so I've soldered my wires on I'll give you a bit of a close-up uh, of that through the microscope in a second uh, the other thing I need to do is I need to um, remove the metal casing uh, off the can and I um, also need to remove this arm cable um, from the main board so that I can plug in my donor one. Now, it's a fairly straightforward task. There is a little bit of silicon or something on there that they put on there in the factory, um, but it's a fairly straightforward task. You know, just don't rush it, take your time. Okay, so there's just a little bit of this silicon on here, and with this one, it looks like most of it's actually missed. There's a little bit on the cable. Most of it's ended up on the connector. Um, it scrapes away fairly easily. You also need to remember that you uh, put some back uh, when you uh, put it back together. As you saw, that actually that wasn't actually holding the top down, but it, the actual silicon is holding the cable in so if I just carefully remove that silicon I'll then be able to remove that cable and I just tuck it under the board there because it's not needed so yeah I've just tucked that under the board out of the way and then I just remove the rest of this silicon so that when I put my new fresh silicon on that it uh, does a really good job and it uh, has a lot to stick to. So as you can see, there's that FB36 right here um, that I was talking about. I'll use my probe because it's a bit shiny. That's the FB36, so I tagged one wire there. And up here is pin one of the JTAG. Uh, so I tagged the other wire there. So that's your two points. Doesn't really matter which way around those two wires go. As long as the resistor uh, is on the probe side. So. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is to remove the cover off the can. It can be a little bit tricky. Um, but you just generally want to get down low on it and just pry it up. Yeah, it came up pretty easy. Just be careful of this GPS chip. You don't want to be putting a lot of pressure on it. Uh, if you feel like you're getting a little carried away. You can put a bit of foam or something there just to protect it. Um, but as you can see, that one came off pretty easily. Uh, and it's basically, you know, it's just got these little divots in it um, which just hold it on. So what you're really doing is breaking that away from the actual uh, inside bit. So when we have a look in here, one of the things that we can see, I'll see if I can get in a little bit closer. One of the main things we want to look at is our uh, TP1, which is where we're going to touch our probe. Now, looking at this guy, it doesn't look like there's a lot of... Oops. doesn't look like there's a lot of the underfill on him. And I reckon, yeah, I can feel that. So what you find is as you just kind of scratch just a little bit into it, you get to a point where you're like, that, go, that feels like metal. And that's all you need to do. So I should have enough there now to just trigger the probe. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to plug in that um, USB to serial device. Uh, and that plugs into basically this connector here, which is known as J2. So I'm going to plug that in. You need to make sure it's orientated correctly. So ground always goes to the top. I need to move this out of it because I can't get in underneath it. So when it comes to that connector, ground is always the top, which is up this way. Top is referred to as where the gimbal is. 
So I'll just plug this in. There we go. Yep, cool. There is a little sheet which tells you which way around um, uh, the other two wires go, but they're not as uh, critical. If you get the ground in the wrong place, you'll destroy your board. So you need to make sure the ground's in the right place. If you get TX and RX backwards, all that happens is you don't get the output on the screen. Okay, so I just have a little bit of foam which I put under my board, um, and that's just to make sure that I don't short out um, this board onto the main board because it's going to sit on top of it. When you put this cable in, you need to make sure it's nice and square, and then the two little lugs, one at either end of the cable, so this guy and that guy, you need to make sure that those two little lugs are seated properly. When you put the clamp down and you look at it, it should be this this line on the cable should be really parallel to the connector. If it's skewed, you uh, you want to do it again um, because if it's if it's skewed, then you might actually be um, shorting pins out across that connector, which can be bad. Okay, so we've got the board in. Um, I've plugged my cable in. I'm going to plug this into my computer. There's me plug for it. There it is. So I'm going to plug that into my computer. I'm going to do a couple of things. One is I am going to start some screen recording software. And I'm just going to start a putty. Uh, and I've got a pre configured putty session. So this is uh, quite important as well. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to load my configuration. So I'm using Linux, so this looks a little bit different to Windows, but uh, the important bits are the speed. So you'll notice the speed is set to 11.5.200. Uh, my serial line is in a Linux-based uh, terminology. So it talks about dev, TTL, USB 0, and that references something within the operating system, um, which refers to that device. If you are on uh, Windows, what you need to do is open up um, Device Manager, locate your serial device, and see what COM port it's on. The other thing you should do is check the speed of the device uh, in Device Manager. Make sure it's set for 11.5200 as well. Anyway, moving right along. So yeah, speed is the critical bit. Um, you might find that by default it's set to this SSH, uh, in which case it all looks really weird. Um, all you need to do is click on the serial um, and then put whatever your serial device is. Um, it will, for a Windows box, it'll be something like COM2, COM3, COM5, COM10, whatever it is in Device Manager, put in here. Um, and the speed, uh, make sure it's at 11.5200. Um, when you start PuTTY, um, if you don't get this box with some sort of cursor in it, as a general rule, that means that your USB, the serial device, isn't set up correctly. You might be missing a driver, um, the COM port might be wrong, something like that. Uh, there's some good information on the Discord server um, about uh, troubleshooting that. It's something that a few people get caught up on, but mine's good. It's come up and it's showing me um, the window and I've got the cursor in it. I did steal this battery, but it might be a bit tricky. That's all right, I'll hold it down with my hand. So what I'm going to do first is just show you um, the error that you get if you uh, before you fix it. So, so that's the error that you get. As you can see, um, if you look at the boot mode, which is like the fourth line down, uh, it says it's booting from NAND. Uh, and the next one is it's starting the NAND copy, but it can't find um, somewhere to boot from off that NAND. So it basically fails, and that's what that second last line is. NAND boot fail, and it just aborts the whole process. So what we want to do is we want to re-establish that boot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my probe on that CP1 that we always talk about. I'm going to put the battery back in 
and I'm going to turn it on. And as you see, it's now gone boot mode SD MMC. Now I generally hold my pin on that TP1 until I get to the login screen. Once I get to the login screen, I take it off. I have seen on a couple of machines where I get a couple of weird things happening. Like if I take it off before I get to the login screen, it's like it thinks that voltage has stopped flowing uh, or it's no longer in, in the SD boot mode uh, and it just stops working. So we're just about there. Right out, we're at the login screen. So the login name is root, R-O-O-T, and there is no password. So just type in the word root, then hit enter. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to run a couple of commands. So the first one, let's see if they're still in memory. Yeah, that's good, they're still in memory. So the first one is the instmod command, and what that does is it makes uh, any partitions on that NAND that are not writable, writable. So we run that, you'll see that it's, uh, some of them it says were already writable, um, some of them it's made writable. So that's important. If you don't do that, you won't be able to write the new bootloader in. So the one we're targeting is uh, zero. So the next command we want to run is this command, uh, which uh, basically backs up uh, what's there. So when we run this, we'll see it run through. It'll have some errors. You know, there's some errors in there, input output error. And that's because that partition is corrupt, but we want to back it up anyway. So now we've got a backup of it. The next thing we want to do is we want to uh, erase uh, that partition on the NAND, so the MTD0. So let's do that, and it's a fairly quick process. There you go, that's done. And now we want to write the new bootloader into uh, the NAND. Now all these commands um, are in the description of this video. Uh, you can also copy and paste them in, and I recommend that you do that um, because when you copy and paste them, you know that there'll be no errors in relation to that command line. You won't accidentally have a capital O um, as a zero. Uh, and in, in, in this scenario, because we're writing to a Linux-based uh, operating system, that's important. Uh, when it comes to Windows, a lot of things not case-sensitive. Passwords in Windows are case-sensitive. Um, but in the Linux world, a lot of stuff is case sensitive. Um, and that includes a whole range of things, even things like usernames. Usernames in Linux are case sensitive. So uh, the last thing we want to do is uh, just write that out. And as you see, it'll just run through, writing, 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 writing. Okay, it's finished. So that's basically it. If I turn this off uh, and start it up, uh, you'll notice the gimbal initialize, it'll try and connect. Um, I'll pair it to the controller, I've just got to grab it. So you've got a couple of options from here. You can shut down PuTTY if you want and then just boot it up. Or the other thing we can do, even without sticking uh, the other components in and trying to pair it, let's remove the battery, plug the battery back in, and let's power it on and you'll see the difference. Um, so this time it'll actually boot from the NAND. Um, I'm not booting from SD, this is over here. So I turn it on and straight away you'll see a difference. So it's still booting from NAND, as you can see, um, but it's running through um, and it's actually into the kernel uh, partition uh, and, and booting off it now. So this is gonna work. And as you can see, I've already got like a red flashing light back here, which says that, you know, it's just trying to sort stuff out. This will error out, um, basically because I don't have the gimbal in. Um, so yeah, it'll complain about that. But what I'll do, I'll shut it down by holding the button in. As you can see, that powered off. I'll just grab a controller. A few moments later. 
I've just grabbed the controller and I'm powering it up. Uh, what I'm going to do is I am just going to clear some of this stuff out of the way that's not there. So I don't need that camera anymore. I don't need this guy anymore, so I'll turn him off. Take the battery and the gimbal off. Let's move that out of the way. So I am going to plug this gimbal in. You do get a few issues with gimbals from time to time. It's not unusual. Um, I will switch back to the other arm board. These can be fun to do. And I just make sure it's nice and square, those lugs are located correctly, and then I just push the little clip down on that. All right, so let's uh, disconnect that all together. Make sure he's not gonna touch anything. What I'm gonna do is I am going to put this guy into pairing mode by holding down the power button uh, for uh, eight seconds. There you go, gimbal swung in place, and I've got a blue flashing light, and the controller isn't paired to anything, so uh, it's basically said, well, what do you want to do? So let's pair, uh, and it says, make sure camera is powered off, then power on and hold the button for eight seconds until the lights on the arm start to blink. So they're doing that, and then it says, press the power button on the camera. When pairing is complete, the button flashes green. So, you'll notice this has gone to blue, which means that they know about each other. So, I press the power button, it flashes green. Pairing successful. Done. Controller says pairing was successful. This has now gone to a green state. So if I swipe up on that. Uh, yes, the video defaults. Batteries been checked. Uh, I can actually see uh, video through that. So yeah, I've got video coming through from the camera. The light's green, which means it's ready to take off. This drone won't take off because we're inside, um, but you'll also notice um, that I got a good boot out of that as well. And I am at the login screen. You need to press enter to actually see the login screen. So that's good to go. Um, I could potentially take off. Um, so if I hit the start stop button, it'll tell me I've got no GPS. Um, I can override that. I've got no props on, so I'm not worried. So these motors will all spin up. So that's good to go. Stop those. All right, so from here, what you need to do, and I will power the drone down, power the controller down. Powering off. I'll remove the battery. I'll remove this guy. I'll disconnect him from there, which closes my putty session. Uh, I need to put this cover back on uh, and this little foam block goes in the top left hand corner. It's simply slide it back on and then just push it down. Make sure it's down everywhere. I need to desolder these wires and I need to put a little bit of silicon on this connector to make sure that it, it doesn't pop up in flight. So silicon on the connector, remove these two wires. I can put the cover back on. It's exactly the same as you took it off, just those six screws. Uh, and that's pretty much ready to go. And uh, I'll take it for a test flight in two seconds and um, yeah, I'll show you. Righto. The last thing I want to do before I put the cover back on, uh, I just want to put a little bit of silicon around this connector. So I want to try and squirt some of it under it. Because that will help 
hold the cable in place regardless of what's happening with the clip itself. And then, yeah, it's a little bit across the top. It's uh, just kind of holding the clip itself and the cable. Making a bit of a mess of that one. But yeah, only needs a little bit. You don't need to overdo it. Cool. Okay, so it's all ready to go. I've removed the flux I used. I've uh, put some silicon on the onboard connector. Um, yeah, all I need to do is whack the cover and get the screws in. One thing with the cover, just remember, you need to kind of loop over that bottom hook and then kind of come across at an angle to get over the other one. Come on. And then you can just kind of clip it down from the front and all the way to the back and yeah, that's in. So a couple of screws, uh, a test flight and uh, yeah, that's the job done. Right, so those screws are in. Uh, I'm just going to leave it a little while just for that uh, silicon to uh, do its thing. And uh, then I'll, I'll take it for a test flight and uh, I'll give you a look at that. But it's pretty straightforward. It's just me flying the drone. There's nothing fancy about it. And uh, yeah, this one's ready to go back. location. Compass interference. Move to a new location or recalibrate the compass. Compass interference. Move to a new location or recalibrate the compass. Ready to fly.
is returning to the launch location. Ready to fly.